Most of us are familiar with the term New Covenant Church and its implication that the believers under that banner believe that all the old covenants have been fulfilled and consequently replaced by the new covenant made on Calvary. And all of us who have been raised under that banner of Christianity, regardless of what denomination, are familiar with this mindset. And it is primarily the most debated issue of anyone returning to the Hebraic roots of the faith that was not only instituted and practiced by all the apostles, but was historically practiced by millions of apostolic early believers for hundreds of years in messianic synagogues established predominantly all over the eastern part of the Roman Empire. And this is a historical documented fact. Paul warned us concerning the damage falsehood would cause in 1 Corinthians 5 verse 6 that all it takes is a little leaven to leaven the whole lump. And our enemy is brilliant at mixing lies with truth, which lead to confusion and at worst a falling away from the faith. And the primary reason he gets away with it is because of our ignorance to and our rejection of Father's Torah, the very foundation of the apostolic faith the apostles taught from, and that all their epistles point to, because it was their scriptures for hundreds of years. If we knew the Torah like the apostles and early believers did, we would have a much clearer understanding of their writings in the New Testament. The primary reason we have believed that all the old covenants have been done away with is because of our ignorance to the principal teachings in the Torah, which define properly the truth concerning covenant, sacrifice, and atonement. And not only can these truths not be changed, all three were applied to what Yeshua accomplished for us at Calvary. Yet most believers are completely clueless on these three subjects in relationship to their meaning in Torah. I am going to address this issue head on and not only prove it is false, but show the pattern established in the Torah regarding how the Yahed creates a covenant every time. And guess what? The pattern never changes because it cannot change because Father declared he does not change in Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. Let me cut to the chase and ask you a rhetorical question. Under the law of Moses, did anyone ever in the entire Old Testament Tanakh even enter into covenant with the animal that was being sacrificed on the altar? Can you find one place that this happened? The answer is no, because it not only never happened, it is an absurd question. And yet the enemy has successfully implanted in our brain for the purpose of division the falsehood that all the covenants in the Old Testament Tanakh were made with Father and the new covenant made on Calvary is with the Messiah. And if you believe this lie, then you can see how easy it is to fall for the next lie, that all the old covenants have been fulfilled and done away with by the new covenant. The truth is, depending on what its purpose was, the animal being sacrificed on the altar was always used to connect father with man through the shedding of blood, whether it was for the making of a covenant or to atone for sin or both. So consequently, when Yeshua was pouring out his blood on Calvary under the laws of Father's Torah concerning covenant, concerning sacrifice, and concerning atonement, Yeshua was the sacrificial lamb whereby through his body and blood, both covenant and atonement was being provided by Father to those who desire to receive his gift. In other words, the whole reason for Calvary was to provide a pathway through Yeshua's sacrifice, whereby we could enter into a new covenant and thereby receive redemption and return back to Father and once again strive to obey his teachings and instructions for life, his Torah. What I submit to you 
is that the pattern never changes, that all the covenants from the covenant of Sabbath at creation all the way to Calvary are not only with Father, they are through His Son, Yeshua. And Father has not only appointed Yeshua as the mediator of the new covenant, but Yeshua has always been the mediator of every everlasting covenant Father has established with man and with creation. And the placement of the Aleph Tavs in the Old Testament Tanakh will confirm this unchangeable pattern by revealing Yeshua's presence every time a covenant is made with Father. There is a complete list of these verses I am about to share in the second parasha of Genesis in the Messianic Aleph Tav scriptures. But let's look at each one of them briefly. The first is naturally the covenant of Sabbath, which is proclaimed in Exodus 31, verse 16, which states, Therefore you shall keep the children of Israel, Aleph Tav's Sabbath, to observe Aleph Tav's Sabbath throughout all their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days made Yahuwah, Aleph Tav, the heavens, Aleph Tav, the earth. And on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Now this was established by Father, both with and through his son, Yeshua, after the six days of creation, and was set apart in Genesis 2, verse 3, which states, And blessed Elohim, Aleph Tav day, the seventh, and sanctified Aleph Tav, him, and in him he rested from all his work, which created Elohim and made. Again, the placement of the Aleph Tav shows possession that Aleph Tav Yeshua is Adonai of the Sabbath, and consequently mediator of the covenant of Sabbath, which he claimed to be Adonai of the Sabbath, which was set apart. And anyone keeping Sabbath is set apart and marked. And the sign of this everlasting covenant is the Sabbath and the pattern that the Yahed establishes at this first everlasting covenant with man and creation. We see Yahuwah, Father, working with and through the Aleph Tav Son, Yeshua. Moving on to the covenant Father establishes both with and through Yeshua, with Noah in Genesis 6, verse 18, which states, But with you will I establish Aleph Tav my covenant. And it is repeated in Genesis 9, 9, which states, I will establish Aleph Tav my covenant with you, Aleph Tav with your seed after you, Aleph Tav with every living creature that is with you, birds, cattle, and every animal of the earth from those that went out of the ark. I will establish Aleph Tav my covenant with you. No more will all flesh be killed by the waters of the flood, and there will not be a flood to destroy the earth. And Elohim said, This is the sign of the covenant, which I will make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all generations to come. Aleph Tav my rainbow, I will set in the cloud, and it will be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. And it will come to pass, when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the rainbow will be seen in the cloud. I will remember Aleph Tav my covenant, which is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters will no longer become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the rainbow will be in the cloud and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between Elohim and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. Again, we see the divine pattern of the Yahed in the everlasting covenant Father made with Noah, was both with and through Aleph Tav Yeshua. And the sign of his everlasting covenant is Aleph Tav's rainbow in verse 15. Moving on to the Abrahamic covenant in Genesis 17, verse 7, which states, I will establish Aleph Tav my covenant between me and you and your descendants for all generations as an everlasting covenant to be an Elohim to you and to your seed. I will give to you and to your seed after you Aleph Tav's land where you are a stranger, Aleph Tav all the land of Canaan 
for an everlasting possession, and I will be their Elohim. Elohim said to Abraham, But you, Aleftav, my covenant, will keep both you and your seed after you for all generations. Aleftav, my covenant, which you will keep between me and you and your seed after you, every male child among you will be circumcised. And you will circumcise Aleftav flesh of your foreskin, and it will be a sign of the covenant between me and you. Again, we see the divine pattern of Father establishing his covenant with Abraham, both with and through Aleftav Yeshua, with the sign being the Aleftav circumcision of the flesh. And notice the way the word a sign is spelled in verse 11. The word sign is always spelled Aleph, Vav, Tav. But this time, the Hebrew letter Lamed for authority is added as a prefix. And the Aleph Tav is divided by the Vav, which represents man, basically signifying the authority of the covenant is established by Aleph Tav Yeshua with each man through circumcision of the flesh as the sign. And of course, we see the everlasting Abrahamic Aleph Tav covenant of the Yahed passed on to Isaac in Genesis 17, verse 19, which states, And Elohim said, Sarah, your wife, will bear you a son, and you will call Aleph Tav his name Isaac, and I will establish Aleph Tav my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. And we also see recognition of the Aleph Tav covenant with Abraham passed on to Jacob in Exodus 6, verse 3, which states, And I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob by the name of El Shaddai, but by my name, Yahuwah, I was not known to them. And I have also established Aleph Tav, my covenant with them, to give them Aleph Tav's land of Canaan, Aleph Tav's land of their pilgrimage, in which they were strangers. And this is repeated also in Leviticus 26, verse 42, which states, I will remember Aleph Tav, my covenant with Jacob, and also Aleph Tav, my covenant with Isaac, and also Aleph Tav, my covenant with Abraham. The pattern continues with Moses, and there are really too many verses to list. So I will just show you two. In Exodus 19, starting off in verse 5, it states, Now therefore, if you will obey my voice and keep Aleph Tav, my covenant, then you will be a peculiar treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and you will be a kingdom of priests and a sacred nation to me. Now, after seeing this evidence, why would anyone want this covenant to be null and void or done away with and forfeit not only this promise, but all the blessings that encompass the Mosaic covenant that are made to us if we continue to walk in obedience of the Torah by faith? The truth is, when the Yahed makes a covenant, it is always forever. And the proof is that Elohim is not a man that he can lie, for he places the strongest Hebrew word for everlasting with each of his covenants with man, the Hebrew word olam, to prove that all of Father's covenants are forever. Let's look at the everlasting covenant for a moment. The Yahed makes with Phineas in Numbers 25, verse 10, stating, And Yahuwah spoke to Moses, saying, Phineas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, has turned away Aleph Tav, my wrath, from the children of Israel, because while he was zealous for Aleph Tav, my sake, among them, so I did not consume Aleph Tav, children of Israel, in my jealousy. Therefore I will give to him Aleph Tav, my covenant of peace, and he will have it, and his descendants after him, also a covenant of everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his Elohim and made atonement for the children of Israel. In other words, the Yahed could not make a covenant just with Phineas as a reward, because when the Yahed makes a covenant, it is always Olam, everlasting and forever, and travels down to our descendants. Moving on to the everlasting covenant Father has through Aleph Tav Yeshua, 
with David and his throne. In Jeremiah 33, starting in verse 19, which states, And the word of Yahuwah came to Jeremiah, saying, So says Yahuwah, If you can break Aleph Tav, my covenant, of the day, Aleph Tav, my covenant, of the night, so that there shall not be day and night in their season, then may also my covenant be broken with Aleph Tav David, my servant, that he shall not have a son to reign upon the throne. Aleph Tav, with the Levites, the priest, my ministers. As the host of heaven cannot be numbered, neither the sand of the sea measured, so I will multiply Aleph Tav, seed of David, my servant. Aleph Tav, the Levites, that minister to Aleph Tav, me. In conclusion, I want to show you the pattern and the prophecy of the new covenant with Yeshua on Calvary in Jeremiah 31, verse 31, which states, Surely the day is coming, says Yahuwah, that I will make a new covenant with Aleph Tav, house of Israel, Aleph Tav, house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with Aleph Tav, their forefathers, in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which they broke Aleph Tav, my covenant, although I was a husband to them, says Yahuwah. But Aleph Tav, the covenant that I will make, with Aleph Tav, house of Israel. After those days, says Yahuwah, I will put Aleph Tav, my Torah, in their inward parts, and in their heart will I write it. And I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man Aleph Tav, his neighbor, and every man Aleph Tav, his brother, saying, No, Aleph Tav, Yahuwah, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, says Yahuwah. For I will forgive their iniquity, and their sin I will remember no more. Now, in verse 33, there is a Zehin Aleph Tav before the word describing the new covenant. And it is erroneously translated as this. And shall be is added by the King James Version for sentence clarity. The Hebrew letter Zehin means to cut and is literally describing a word picture of the covenant Father will cut through the sacrifice of Aleph Tav Yeshua on Calvary. And look at the word translated me in verse 34. This is the word Aleph Vav Tav, which is always translated as a sign. But it has the Hebrew letter Yod added at the end. The Hebrew letter Yod means hand, and the Vav means man. Consequently, this four-letter Hebrew word can only be describing the work that Father's hand will accomplish through the physical body of the man named Yeshua, the Aleph Tav, the Messiah, and the work he will do at Calvary. Zechariah also confirms that Aleph Tav is Yeshua when he prophesies in Zechariah 12, verse 10, which states, And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication, and they shall look to me, Aleph Tav, whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourns for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. So the conclusion of this matter is that the pattern established in the beginning whereby the heavens and the earth were created is the same pattern all the covenants were made, and this is the same pattern whereby all the blessings or curses, or judgments are carried out. The Father, working with and through Aleph Tav Yeshua, the Son, together as one. Folks, these are all just some of the scriptures that confirm this pattern, whereby the Yahed works with man, that you will find as you read the Messianic Aleph Tav scriptures. There are thousands more. I'm Bill Sanford trying to put the Aleph Tav in proper perspective in our day. Shalom.